So here we're going to the top, to the roof of the DSL building to see what, um, what the top of the Bicep 3 looks like. What top of the Bicep 3 telescope looks like and it looks like since it's dark sector open house people are getting a tour of the SPT. I know! I can tell! It's not a telescope, it's a solar oven! So this is the wrench that you can use to turn the screws on the ground shelf. Wait, can you Let's lift it? Ratchet. Can you lift it? <laughs> it's probably 40 pounds or something. Hey Brady, so today we're in DSL. And it's a big mess because we're reintegrating Bicep 3, and actually it's Kimmy who's going to give you a tour of Bicep 3. I'll shut up from now and you tell me what this is. Our telescope is a cryostat, so there are different temperature stages. Um, so the, there are the vacuum jacket, which holds the vacuum and sits at room, room temperature, and mm -hmm. then within it is a cylinder metal shield, 50K, and this is this is inside the 50K, and it sits at around 4 Kelvin. So when you say 50K, that's 50 degrees Kelvin, Kelvin above, above absolute zero. Yes. These are the devices that detect the photons, right? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, so we have 20 detector modules. Each of these squares are is one detector module. And on each of these modules, mm -hmm. there are 8 by 8 dual polarization sensitive pixels. There is an AR anti-reflection coating on top, actually. That's that's the layer that we are looking at right okay. now. And the uh, detector is actually underneath that. Uh, so this is the lower half of the vacuum jacket. Um, that is the 50K, so as I mentioned before, the 50K, the 4K goes inside. Mm -hmm. The detector is going to be around here. Okay. And then this whole set of 50K and 4K camera side of our telescope goes into the vacuum jacket. And now you ask, what, it, what are the optics that uh, focuses all the CMP photons onto the detec detectors? I didn't ask, but if you want to tell me. <laughs> so they are in the other room. Okay. This is the third generation, so bicep. One yep. and bicep two observed on this mount. Okay. So actually, this mount arrived ten years ago. So hey Brady, I just want to show you a little piece of history. I, I only pretend when I ask Kimmy questions not to know the mount, but obviously I know it pretty well because I uh, spent a whole year with it. And if you come over here, uh -huh. you can see the 50K and 4K focal points up the lower half. So this is where our lenses live in. Can you show us lenses afterwards? Yes, one of it is actually in there. The black is one of our, it's the eyepiece lens. Okay. Yes. So this telescope is actually a refractor mm -hmm. telescope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this lens is made out of alumina, which is a kind of ceramic. Okay. There is a layer of anti-reflection coating on it. Okay. The AR coating is made out of a, a kind of black epoxy. And then you see these square lines on it. Mm -hmm. And that is for stress relief, for the difference in uh, differential contraction for uh, the two kinds of material when it cools to 4K. So obviously we, we can't see through, but... Microwaves can just pass right through. Okay, so it's yes. transparent to microwaves. This is a window of the cryostat, so it keeps the vacuum and also it's transparent in, 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 in the microwaves. So that means that outside we have atmosphere, atmospheric mm -hmm. pressure and inside, inside we have vacuum. Mm -hmm. And it has to hold that pressure mm -hmm. and let, the, uh, let this, the, the microwave photons through. Yep. That's cool. Ooh, shiny. Yeah, so these are, these are our um, infrared filters. We use them to uh, reflect away 80% of the incoming, incoming infrared loading that is uh, not in the microwave band, that is in higher frequency bands. Okay, so the, the light that is in between visible light and millimeter wave, we want to get rid of. Why, why do we want to get rid of that? Uh, because if we let them in, it's going to heat up our instrument and not be, we won't be able to keep it at 4K, 50K and uh, uh, really cold quarter Kelvin temperatures. Okay. This has a mylar substrate, has a mylar backing, mm -hmm. and then uh, before we laser ablate tiny squares that we 
can't see by eye, but uh -huh. it's cheap. Uh -huh. it's, uh, one side is aluminized with thin aluminum. Okay, and you, you remove that aluminum with laser? Uh, with, with laser. Okay. And with what we mean is um, small square islands pattern. Okay. And what this does is it forms a low pass filter. And the focus cutoff is around one terahertz. So everything that means everything above one terahertz well, gets we reflected. reflected. I see. I shine a laser, and you can look at the pattern on the wall. Oh, cool! Yeah. So what is this? This is the diff diffraction pattern. Yeah. Wow. So do you actually use this in a scientific way to, to probe no. how well? No. <laughs> we can't. It's, this is mostly just cool looking. <laughs> Does it sometimes freak you out that if you mess up just one aspect of this, none of this is going to work? No, it doesn't, Denis. <laughs> I'm not trying to put pressure on you. Wow, it's tall. It's really tall. You have no leg holes. Yeah, I know. You gotta shimmy up the. Where is that? Shimmy up the, uh, the the angle behind you. Okay. It didn't used to be so hard. On bicep one. Uh -huh. You guys have cut a lot of uh, the climbing holes. Yeah. You're too tall, didn't you? I know. <laughs> the requirement for bike working on bicep yeah. is to be less than Four, six feet. Six feet. <laughs> I fail. <laughs> <laughs> this so tube. the telescope has to move in three axes, so you, with your cables you have to be very careful that they don't get caught and snag and rip themselves apart. Right. So we try and put them in these carriers that have a defined range that they'll move through, so nothing gets broken when it's moving. What are the cables carrying? So the biggest ones are what's making all the sound. Those are the helium lines going to the pulse tube cooler, trying to cool down the inside of the cryostat. And then in addition to that, there's lots of other stuff. So a lot of electronic lines, read out the data, read out temperatures. There's some nitrogen hose. So I pump some nitrogen in the top of the window. I'm wondering if I can the... actually see the window if I go. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a nitrogen membrane there to try and keep it dry so nothing, snow isn't freezing on the window. One of the very specific properties of, of this mount is that it has these three axes of rotation, including one that allows the receiver itself, this, to rotate around its bore site. So that allows the receiver to make images on the sky, aligning the axes of the polarization of the receiver at different angles. We have a lot of detector channels. How many channels? How many detectors? So we have, uh, about 2,500 detectors, so each one needs to be powered and read out. So each one of these boxes handles a quarter of the detectors. So these are specific electronics that are uh, powering and reading out our detectors. And then we have these fiber optic lines that go to the computers so we can record what's right. going on and control them. And this one is similar, but it's for the thermometers, so not for the actual data product, but for monitoring how the telescope is doing when it's cold. Okay, and so th these are all the cables that go up and down the cable route? Yeah, so this is a good number of them that have to go up and around and make sure they clear when it rotates. You need a big enough shield that any signal from the ground is not going to interfere with what you want to see on the sky. So it's really so that the telescope only sees the sky yeah. and doesn't see any of the heat of the glow from the, from yeah. the ground. On the ground here also are, they call the four baffles, which is another, another level of uh, you know, shielding so that nothing stray radiation comes into your telescope. So these are two that stack on top of each other that we put on top of the top of the telescope in there. Uh -huh. So that green boot is where you're climbing, climbing around inside earlier, that insulation. So it's like a big flexible thing as the telescope moves around, it just crunches and okay. squeezes. So you can see under there. hangs right here and has a brush.
crush so that all the warm air is forced through these gaps and that's what keeps the snow from melting. Okay. And then on top of that plate we put those two big cans on top. Hi, did you enjoy that video? Well, make sure to check out some more in the video description below or on the links on the screen. I'll see you later.